Hello, welcome to part three of the ED Acres property tour series. If you haven't caught parts one and two yet, you can go back and watch those on my channel. In this part, we're going to continue our journey around our property and, and applying the different approaches that have been established by the, the gurus in the industry and taking their teachings and putting them to work. So I hope you enjoy this. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, I'd love for you to drop those uh, in the comments below and help us learn and grow as a community. Um, my idea for this tour is just to share with you the different things I've been trying, the different things that I've learned, and some of my ideas as well, you know, taking those teachings and then putting them to use and meshing them all together. So as always, thank you for support and your viewership of this channel. If you like this video, please share it with your friends. And remember, it is a great day to be outdoors. For today's property tour, I'm going to take you on a flyover. And we're going to start with what would have been shown in the second part of the property tour. And if you haven't checked that out, please give that a look. On the left is the new property that hasn't been logged quite as aggressively. And you can see the difference between the left and the right as we fly down the trail the kids and I established. Blank slate on the right with that field. Uh, now we're flying over the trail still, but you can kind of make out the bank spline um, at the intersection. That trail that goes up to the bank spline also has a smaller trail that wraps around that'll take you down. Intersection does go down to that field I just referenced. And now we're going to kind of follow that main four-wheeler trail around and then from south right now to eventually the west. Right now over the screen is where there was a stand and in the middle of the frame is where the new water hole, the new stand and new licking branch are at for the last couple years. We're about to turn straight west and we're about to fly into our third field which I have ideas for that I'll show you at the end of this clip in a Google map form and then a clear cut at the top of the frame. So here I am at the top of the ridge, top of the hill looking back towards the field. Uh, you can barely make it out in that opening. Um, this is the intersection right down here where my last clip came from. And then over here is one of our bank splines just to give you some perspective. Now what I've done is I have mode, I will call them manipulation trails including this one. And I used I purchased a DR walk behind brush mower. And so this trail was meant to give us a shot out of that banks as well as steer deer along our property through some of the thicker logging. And so it's going to branch off this way. Hopefully you can see this is a, a smaller, narrower trail. And you know, the main four wheeler trails, they're probably too wide for a buck to use all the time. You know, bucks don't want to be out in the open that much and so in your hunts you're gonna have to plan for that too you know you're gonna have to pretend or realize they're gonna be in the downwind side of those trails and that makes planning your hunts a little bit trickier too but um, you know they're gonna want to walk in the thick stuff and just kind of see what's going on in the fields themselves so hope this isn't too bouncy as I walk you down this trail but this trail, you know, meanders through stuff, you know, wherever I can make her go without having to work too hard. But then I don't want to make anything straight. So now we turn straight to the east again towards the property line. And I would estimate this is about 26 inches wide, probably because there's a little bit of overlap with each pass coming back and forth. I'll show you some videos on what I do to, um, make mowing this easier on yourself using a hedge trimmer first. And I do have um, a stand up in that tree, which is funny you can't even see it because it's pretty dang exposed, but um, never sat in it this year, kind of skylined and maybe not the best spot, but it was on the edge and we had the ability to hunt behind us. So there you go. All right, here we are, um, and we're just heading to the south now, meandering through. This is another, this is a deer steer 
long time ago, me and a buddy planted red pines along the line. This one made it. Um, there's a few more that made it. This used to be a property boundary and it's not anymore, uh, but still it's okay to have some diversity with your tree species. Um, as I'm walking, you know, we got some sprouts for deer brows and then we're just kind of meandering through for a bow shot right there. Um, never really worked out that way. I do have a spy point camera up here and every now and then something big, but not, not consistently. So then this trail, supposed to be an access trail, uh, goes down right to the south line and wraps its way around. And, you know, it is thick in all of this as all this logged up stuff is. And it's just good. This is a shot heading down the ridge towards the border of our property um, with a neighboring property. And I have an access trail cut straight uh, west to east along that that I'll take you to eventually. Kind of a heartbreaker here. There was a giant white oak. You can see how it broke off. Had one heck of an encounter right here a few years back, just like you dream it up. You had a nice giant buck tending a doe. Had a water hole right over here. And I've moved everything since then. But we lost the tree. So there's the carnage from the rest of the stand. So... When I was mowing this trail, I had to get out the big husky. You know, I will mention I use an electric saw for most things, but had to cut through this white oak top and another thing that we'll probably just leave for the deer to bed along. And there's the foreground of a neighboring property that we now own, and it's uh, got to get logged a little heavier next time. And then just a shot back the way that we came. We're back at the intersection right now, uh, looking back uphill. There's the banks. There's one of the cheat trails. I'm gonna pan this way. Over here we have a cutty link, kind of hidden. This one's been dead for a while. Um, I put that bro I put that top there on purpose to break up the outline from the side. And then this trail walks us out to the field. Um, this is the second field. It's split by what we call the cattle walk, or and then the narrows is on the north end of this. Um, Big field, big plans, you know, but right now rental income and that's super important. And then this trail, four wheeler trail, access trail is gonna wrap us eventually. It's south right now, curve around and then go to the west. And that's where I'll take us next. There's the intersection again. I am going to take you south for a little bit just to get you a perspective from the ground and. Hopefully I have a drone clip of this alongside of it so you get an idea from the air. Now I have to tell you right now with my drone clips as we're walking, um, I'm getting better. It is a learning experience. I'm actually gonna try to put out a video about that too. And I have learned a ton from using my drone. I really, really have. And you know, you think back to when, if you're my age, when you were a kid getting a race car, solar, uh, not solar, a uh, remote control race car was such a, awesome awesome gift and you know it cost your folks probably a hundred bucks well two hundred dollars you can get a thing that flies in the air so i just think it's fun and worth it so anyway uh this is an old stand i brushed that out it kind of reminds me i've never watched game of thrones but i put that around me to break up the outline have not sat in this thing for many years do not like the narrow steps but just wanted to point this out to you. This is 20 yards off the field edge. And as a new hunter to the property, it was a decent spot. But now, and I'll have to use footage from a different day. This is a transition from hardwoods into popples. And so this was clear cut and it is thick. And we leave this for all deer all the time. Like we try to leave the majority of our property as all the gurus suggest. And so we don't hunt this section or any section with the wind blowing into all this cover. So um, it's hard to do, you know, if you want to see deer, but you know, you can go out to the field edge and see deer, but are you going to be able to kill a buck? So right now we're walking towards the south line of my property and we're going to head back uphill. Uh, it used to be a kick butt stand here that blew down. And you kind of get the idea. There's a view back towards the north. Um, towards 
the main fields that are up top. Um, I'm gonna pan over here to a spot where I used to have a water hole. You can, I threw a log in there uh, just to kind of uh, let it fill in naturally over time. This is where I used to have a really great stand, beautiful spot, just great views and also dynamite hunting because what I did when we made the logging trails is there is a hard turn, you know, so I created my own corner and deer like to cut from the neighbors right here. This doesn't do it justice, but this is definitely a trail and then they want to hit the trail I was already panning at. And then this uh, heads us, you know, from north to south and then turns us to the west. And then at the bottom of the frame, it actually clips back towards the south again, just for a second. That's where I'll take my next clip from. But here's the regen. Uh, this was logged, I am sorry, I can't remember, but I think three years ago, and it's just, it just can't ask for anything better. This is just so beautiful and so productive. And then again, we don't go into any of that, which I know it's a foggy day and you can't see, but guys, I'm excited to share this stuff with you. So what we're doing right now is we are walking downhill. We had a change in elevation and now we're changing in elevation again. Four wheeler trail, you gotta have access if you end up shooting something. And I'm gonna take you to where I put the new water hole and where I have a bow stand. All right, so we were just up there. Um, that's where the old water hole and the old setup was. Uh, I am going to show you the line. So this is a neighboring property. It's all red pines and thick underneath. They have logged this the right way. It's thick bedding area, which makes this a difficult spot to hunt when you have bedding area on your neighbor's property behind you. So. Another opportunity to help me uh, figure this out a little bit more because we love this spot and we're walking up to a mock scrape. Funny thing about this one is the bears have pretended this is a toy and so they love to, to rip this down. And um, it's just, it's become pretty hard to hunt. You know, I've, I have a access trail that I've mowed right along the line. I'll show you that. There's some footage that uh, shows how well it shows up. This is a big game XL that I camouflaged. I love these stands. I'm going to do a video on assembly and review of one of these. Just have to order one. And this mock scrape and licking branch is a dynamite spot for deer inventory as well. And here's an example of a Cuddy Link safe that I have 3 d camoed. And, you know, this is a small tree, but I just needed this spot so you can see the logs along the side to break up the outline and it probably needs more logs along this side as well but um, I'm going to use this clip for a couple purposes so here's our licking branch our scrape and then here is the trail camera but I love the 3d look you know I love how that hides the camera even more you know you think think about being a deer you know this is seven feet off the ground it's tilted towards the ground two different size screws to give, a, give me that right angle down. And the nice thing about this is, if I wanna pull the camera, I can leave the safe, and I got it all dialed in. So it's just one of those spots that you just know and use every year. So here's the setup here. We got our, our big game XL, I can't remember the exact model. Got a 100 gallon water hole, which clearly is being used. Um, it has been lower than this. We've had a weird winter, um, so there is water, 70 gallons of water maybe. And then there is the mock scrape and licking branch. There is the cutty link. And then in the background, you can kind of see how the trail jogs. So another corner I tried to create, they do like to use this natural depression. Firm believer in deer like to use topography. I don't have anybody that's done a video on that that I know of, um, but I know they gotta be out there because if I'm thinking it, somebody else is thinking it too. And then we have our neighboring uh, red pines. I do have an access trail along those, which we'll go to in a second. And then now we're getting into the clear cut uh, popples. And I have some footage, some videos, some pictures of this before and after. It is mind blowing what this looks like now compared to what it used to look like. The big game is in the background right now. You probably can't make it out. I haven't made very many steps from the water hole actually, but I wanted to give credit to a fellow hunter that has been on this property with me, uh, John Buzzowitz. So you're watching this, Buzz. This is 
your shout out. You know, you also helped me clean up the barnyard quite a bit. So here's the trail the deer are using. And I know this because I've sat in that stand and seen it. And this trail cuts straight in to something we never hunt and out to the ag field. So probably hard to make it out in this clip, but Buzz, that's what we call him, uh, said that we should have a stand on this ridge. And I'm like, nah, the deer use that valley. Well, I also think deer figure out where the stands are, whether you're in them or not, and avoid them. They must have internal range finders, right? But um, the problem is, is that I didn't listen to him and there isn't any trees up here where I can put one up on the high ground. And I do think he was right and I do know I was wrong, but now it's too late. So it's another one of those examples of share your property with other people, pick their brains, get their ideas and uh, use their feedback. And I'm kind of kicking myself. I guess I don't know if I would have done that if the deer would have went down behind me to the east a little bit, but I do definitely know they're using this right here. We're walking out through the clear cut up on the top corner. I'm gonna do a quick pan. And then this is where I have footage of the kids as little beavers helping me log. And it, you know, it did, like I think I mentioned in a different clip, look like a bomb went off. But now we have super cover and there are still hardwoods in all this. And I know for a fact that there are shed antlers in here, but it is impossible uh, so far to find. We will find some. And I know I mentioned sheds a lot. I love shed hunting, you know, and I'm pretty good at it, but not as good as some of the people that I surround myself with. So shout out to the shed hounds out there. So now we're walking west towards the top um, field. It's kind of the top of the big field. And I know I have other clips of this, so I'm probably gonna cut this off. And I know that uh, there might be snow in those clips, but all the same. So we are changing elevation again. We're walking down another ridge and walking out towards the field. We're gonna conclude the live image portion of the property tour with one more drone flyover. So we're traveling right now west to east along where I just took you through the mix of popples and hardwoods. And so on the bottom of the frame would be the ridge and you can make out pretty well the ATV trail that meanders along from west to east and then jogs to the north for a little bit and in front of us here is the new property which I'll bring you in another series. Next we're going to take a hard turn to the north and just conclude this and this was pretty much where we were um, for the tour you can kind of make out the banks blind in the middle of the frame right the now. last thing I want to do is show you the ever expanding Google map um, of our tour so part one we went down this line part two we went to about the banks and then part three we picked up at the banks and headed this way so southwest so I'm just going to zoom in on where we were today and just kind of recap. So Banks Blind, we went to the intersection, we went up this smaller trail. I talked about the stand on the line, which is going to go away. It's skyline and doesn't serve a purpose anymore. And then we went down the ATV trail, old water holes right about here, um, mock scrape, camera, water hole, and then stand right here. And then we talked about this ridge and how perhaps that would have been a better location for a stand moving out into what I keep referring to as the blank slate more idea for more of these habitat pockets this would be an apple tree planting someday um, this would be another long food plot with, plot with screening in it another food plot here more habitat pockets and then potentially a gun stand here so we ended our tour right about here and so we'll have to pick up the next portion of the tour here and then we're going to head to the west. So that concludes part three of our property tour of EB Acres. Again, if you haven't caught parts one and two or there should be a part four at least and maybe a part five, not, not yet at the time of filming, but probably. Um, I hope you watch those and enjoy those too. I appreciate your comments, your viewership, and your suggestions. And as always, it's a great day to be outdoors. Thank you.